Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This video is on washing machines that start and then stop, either mid-cycle or at the beginning of the program. When you press the start button, the lights may go out or it may be going through the actual program and then it cuts out. Now, this can be a fault with the door lock. You can see all about this in our other videos. Or it may be a problem with the actual printed circuit board. Now we're going to show you how to take this printed circuit board out, inspect for connection faults, which is one problem. You may also have a dry joint on a circuit board, that could be the other problem. Or thirdly, you may have a component failure. It is possible that either resistors have gone, uh, capacitors are a common fault on these circuit boards, and there are some other chips that we'll show you in the video which may have failed. I'll just simulate the fault for you here. Uh, we turn the machine on, the dial takes a couple of seconds to come on and we'll change it to display a 30 minute wash. Now we'll shut the door, press start. You will hear the machine actually start pumping out but when it comes to turn the motor the actual loading on the circuit board is kicking out as you can see here in a second and the display actually goes off now if I turn the on off uh, off and then put it back on it will light up again uh, but it keeps cutting out now this is a good sign that it's a possible fault with the circuit board so before doing any work on the machine always unplug the appliance from the electricity supply as I said earlier there could be a fault with the door lock it's worth checking first. Uh, also, there's a suppressor usually at the back of the machine. Uh, sometimes this can be damaged, but predominantly it's the circuit board fault. Now, there are many chips that can actually go wrong on a circuit board. Uh, you've got capacitors, resistors, transistors. You've also got some relays on the board, triax, and some other chips which go wrong but before disconnecting the electrics it's always worth taking a photograph of where all the plugs go although on most circuit boards they can only go in one position but it's worth taking a picture to make sure you do it right and don't wire it up wrongly after now the circuit boards can either be mounted behind the facial panel and on this model it's on the side of the machine it does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer but we've got the circuit board out and the first thing I spot on the circuit board here is one of the capacitors is bulging. If you compare that to this one, you can actually see that the capacitor has got a domed head on it. This is a good sign that the capacitor has gone. There are many chips that can actually go on the circuit board, diodes, resistors, transistors. It's worth checking all the small capacitors on the board. You will normally get visual signs that they're gone. You may have to use a magnifying glass. We can physically see that the capacitor on this one is gone. This is a link switch which is very common to go. You have to look closely round with a magnifying glass. And these are the switch relays that control things like the heater. At the top of the board here you can see some other resistors and diodes. It's worth going round visually inspecting all these. But once you've done that you really have to uh, take the board apart. And sometimes you will need to desolder uh, chips to actually test them. We test them with a capacitance resistance meter which I'll show you in a second. These can be bought quite cheaply. I put some links on the website uh, to the Pacific testing tools you need. We're using a desoldering station here. I'll also put a link onto that as well. Uh, on the web page you can find the link above. But you need to de desolder the capacitor first. Now we can physically see that it's got a domed head. The new one is exactly the same uh, microfarad and voltage but it is slightly smaller. Technology has moved along and things get smaller. Now with the tester we connect up the good one and as you can see we've got a thousand and twelve and this capacitor anyway had I think it's five percent uh, tolerance rating so that's within the parameters 
but we'll just test the old one here and as you can see in a second we've only got half its power showing we've got 506 uh, microfarad showing so that capacitor is definitely down and when you're fitting a new capacitor on the circuit board you should see a plus and a minus the minus is normally showing on the side of the capacitor the longer leg on the capacitor as well is normally the positive and just fit it into the board turn it over and now you need to solder it on with these test meters for checking uh, diodes resistors and capacitors um, they're very useful for checking all the chips on a circuit board to make sure that they're correct readings sometimes you will need to desolder the old chips uh, to take them off to test them because you won't be able to test them in line but the effort is worth it when you consider how much a new circuit board will cost you and you've got, you stand a good chance of being able to repair the board yourself and the desoldering machine is absolutely brilliant for uh, getting the chips off the uh, circuit board themselves although you can use desoldering wire um, these desolder stations aren't that expensive and as I said I'm just replacing these two capacitors as well while I'm doing the job um, just out of caution more than anything uh, they can go uh, so I've seen a lot of these different capacitors fail over the years and it's well worth you know for the few pound it costs to uh, change them now at the website you will find lots of videos on checking things like relay switches uh, also diodes resistors and also every other type of washing machine repair so if this is not your fault there are hundreds of videos on the website to guide you in the right direction for finding the fault on your appliance when reconnecting the circuit board it's well worth going back to the photograph you took at the beginning to make sure that you double check all your plugs are put in the correct place make sure all the connections are good and there we go we'll have this fitted in a second now that we've put the machine back together we'll just try the machine same again on the 30 minute cycle press start still takes a couple of seconds for the LED to come on we've got it set to the 30 minutes we'll just press start the door lock should engage you'll hear a slight click that was the click on the door lock the machines now filling and in a few seconds or so we should have some motor action and this is where it was kicking out before and the display was going dead so we'll just wait for the machine to fill with water and there you go the machine now is turning so for the cost of a few pounds in components and the effort it actually takes to strip the board down and have a look it's well worth having a go especially when you consider manufacturers are charging in excess of £100 for a circuit board. So it's well worth going to the effort. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please remember you can always support the website uh, by buying us a beer. And remember to visit the website for all your parts and all the tools that we used in this video. Uh, I've put on the page above, which you can click on and there's a list of the full tools that we use to actually diagnose the faults and replace the components. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Remember at the website we have videos on washing machine repairs, tumble dryers, dishwashers, ovens, cookers, hobs, extractors and we have some new solar energy videos coming out in the series as well. I hope you found this helpful and again thanks for watching.